Hey there fellow art nerds, my name is Josh and I teach animation class here at Wing Canvas. In this video, I'm going to walk through how you can use Krita in order to bring your drawings to life. Krita is a free open source digital art software that is pretty great to use for animation as well. Here we will cover basic tools, setup, and functions you'll need to get started as an animator. If you're looking to use Krita just for digital art and not animation, we'll link another tutorial video in the corner. Let's get right into it. Now we're going to click new file over here. Krita comes with some default templates, but we're just going to ignore those and go into custom document. If you want to follow along with my file settings, I do have my file set at 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels with a resolution of 100 pixels. Now, if you want to add a little higher, 300 is usually the standard. Just know that 300 will be a little bit more demanding on your computer. And sometimes during playback, if your computer's hardware is not good enough, it might drop some frames and it might stutter. So 100 is pretty good for if you're just experimenting or trying things out. Now if you like these settings you can always name it, press save and predefine sections so that if you open up Krita and want to get that setting immediately you can find it that way. Now these settings look pretty good so I'm just gonna press create. This is what it's gonna look like. So in order to get animating we need the animation timeline and to find that we go to settings, dockers and you can see animation timelines right there. Any other tool or panel that you need to find can also be found over here so once you have them open a little check mark will show up for it so we're gonna click animation timeline and this timeline is where all our animating is gonna be you can see it takes up quite a lot of space so typically this workspace layout isn't what I use instead I like to use Krita's animation workspace and we're gonna open that by going to Windows workspace and default is how you can reset everything, but we're just gonna use animation. And you can see now we get one free side on the right. Now you can see my brush preset and my color wheels missing. So to bring those back up, we go to settings, dockers, and there's my color wheel picker. And I'm just gonna put it here. And I also want my brush preset. So settings, dockers, and brush preset. I'm gonna drag it over here. And this is typically the layout that I like. And now that everything's set up, we're gonna get animating. So now that we have our our timeline set up you can see that it's a empty timeline and you can tell that it's empty because of all these gray squares so to, in order to create a frame of animation we're gonna click this icon over here that says add blank frame we can also right click and press create blank frame and I'm just gonna do that a few more times and once you create a blank frame of animation what you'll see are these diagonal lines going across the cells or these frames what you'll also notice is that because we created a blank frame of animation it's going to have this blue outline around the cell. So I'm just going to click on frame one over here and I'm just going to draw a dot. And now you'll see that on frame one, it's filled in with this blue color to help indicate to us that it now has a drawing inside of it. So I'm just going to go to frame two now. And I, what I want to do is animate this dot jumping across the screen. So I'm going to give this kind of arching motion. On frame three, it's hard to tell what I should be drawing next kind of hard to figure out the trajectory of this ball and this is where the onion skin comes in and the onion skin is this light bulb icon over here you can also find it on the layers panel basically anything that you do on the layers panel will be reflected on the timelines layer itself you can do similar things on both and it'll affect each other so I'm just going to turn it on and now I can see my drawings on frame one and frame two and on frame three now I can now see where I should place the next drawing and it's going to be this big long arch over here and then on frame four it's going to be coming down and on frame five I'm going to create another blank frame of animation and put this dot over here so now I can take a look at my drawings and flip through the frames that have the drawings on them and I can do this by using the arrow keys you might have to click on the timeline itself so Krita knows you want to use the arrow keys to flip through your frames you can also use the mouse wheel to somewhat quickly scroll through your animation or click on the numbers on the timeline to really quickly scrub through the timeline. I want to play my animation. I can click this play button over here and if I click it again it'll pause it on where I click pause on the timeline. You'll see that there's this orange marker indicating where we are on the timeline and if I click stop that orange marker now jumps back to wherever we started playing our animation which was frame one. So to show it again I'm gonna go to frame three click play and now if I click stop you'll notice that it jumps to frame three instead of stopping on wherever I click stopped on the timeline. So that's just like a neat useful tool on Krita's playback setting. Now this forward and back key 
over here it lets me go frame by frame on the timeline whether there's a frame of animation or if it's a blank and empty frame so again it's very similar to the arrow keys and just a way to navigate around your timeline and the skip forward and skip back keys in order for me to show you how these work I'm gonna have to shift my frames around and so to do that I'm gonna select frame 2 hold down shift and click on frame 5 and now I can really move them anywhere on the timeline but I'm just gonna space them out one by one this is called animating on twos and this just means that there's a blank frame of animation in between each drawing so now if I click the skip forward button it'll only jump to the frames that have drawings on them which are frames 1 3 5 7 and 9 so this is really good for checking what your animation looks like and instead of going frame by frame you can just jump to the frames that actually have your drawings on them now if I want to delete a frame I can either click this remove keyframe button or I can right click and press remove keyframe if I want to duplicate I can click that duplicate button and it'll basically duplicate anything that's on my canvas or it'll duplicate whatever keyframe was is ahead of it so let's say though I create this beautiful drawing over here but I forgot to create a blank frame of animation before I drew it so if I click blank frame it's gonna erase my drawing so in order to save your drawing what you can do is actually click duplicate and it'll save whatever is on your canvas and now I'm just gonna run down the timeline settings on the top here this bar basically lets me input any kind of frame number and it'll jump to that on the timeline so I jump to frame 50 and then now I jump back to frame 1 so a quick way to jump across your timeline especially if you're animating a lot of frames now drop keyframes is good if your computer is having trouble basically playing back your animation and it's like chugging and it's not running really well clicking drop frames will drop frames of animation so that it plays at the speed that your animation should be playing at this is good for blocking but if you're fine-tuning your animation and you really want things to be smooth and checking that things are playing properly I would keep it off now the speed bar over here basically lets you speed up or speed down your animation now if I look over here we have the onion skin and if I click it it toggles on and off the onion skin panel and the onion skin lets us see the frames of animation that came before as well as the animation frames of animation that are coming up ahead and it's super useful in letting us map out and plan out our animation sequence so we get up to 10 frames previous and 10 frames coming up ahead I like to personally keep it at three to one frames or else your screen starts getting a little bit too hectic and it's hard to tell what you need to draw next now these little bars let you control the opacity of individual onion skin and the big bar lets you control the opacity of all the onion skins and the tint slider well lets you control the tint of the onion skins I leave it at 74% it's kind of like the default percentage and these color swatches down here lets me change the colors of my onion skin so if I want to change it I can do that and then click OK and it'll change the color of my onion skin so feel free to play around with the settings if I want to create a new layer on my timeline I don't have to go to the layers panel I can click this plus icon these layer settings will pop up and if I want to ever import audio I can click this and click open audio and this window will pop up letting me import music or dialogue especially if I have characters talking to one another and if I ever want to zoom in and out of my timeline like let's say I'm working with a hundred frames there's no need to be looking at a hundred frames on my timeline if I'm only working on the first 20 frames so I usually just zoom in if that's the case now the icon next to the onion skin these three bars is the animation setting menu it lets me control where my clip starts and end meaning like where my animation plays when I click play and because my animation sequence isn't that long I'm gonna change it to 12 frame and the frame rate I'm gonna keep at 24 which is like the standard frame rate or 12 frames also works so if I click play right now you'll notice that the moment it hits frame 12 it goes back to the beginning and that's because I clip and I changed it to 12 so the next tool is super important this is the auto frame mode and I use this pretty much all the time basically I don't have to click add blank frame and I don't have to right click to create blank frame it automatically creates a blank frame of animation the moment my stylus touches my tablet or the moment I start drawing essentially so you can see that on frame 4 I just immediately start drawing and it automatically created a frame of animation for me which is super convenient and I can just focus on my drawing and not have to worry about whether I created a blank frame or not. So I'm just connecting my ball over here, making sure that it's smooth and kind of creating this motion trail. You can join our Patreon as that will allow you access to special member perks like critiques and classes. 
So if I click play, this is what it looks like. And, you know, I'm going to say it looking not too bad. It's dropping a little early maybe, but, you know, I like it. Now, the other option that comes with auto key is auto key duplicate. And it does the exact same as auto key blank, but instead of a blank frame of animation, it creates, well, a duplicate. And it does exactly what we talked about previously. Now I'm going to walk through how you can render your animation. And as you can see on my screen, I have a new file with this kind of fireball type character. And what I did is I took this this red blob and I took the momentum and the kind of the jumping action that it had and I turned it into a character so this is the fireball character that you can see over here and this is what the animation for this file looks like and it's looking uh, not too bad pretty good now before you kind of render your animation it's probably good to get some few things set up first so you can see here on my desktop I have a file called fireball and this is the file or folder that everything's gonna go into so all my re in images like the render images and the video file are all gonna be here so to get a render going we're gonna go to file click render animation and this window will pop up now Krita gives you two options you can either render it as an image sequence or you can do it as a video now in order to do it instantly as a video you do need something called an FFmpeg it's a little bit complicated to get it set up you do need to download it and then change some settings on your computer first so we're not going to go into it in this video as it's quite complicated whereas the image sequence is a little bit more open to everyone it's just that it takes a few more steps and it's a bit of a hassle to render your video so everything looks good I wanted to start from frame one and for my fireball animation it, it's 50 frames so everything looks good you can also change the different images I'm gonna keep it at PNG if you want to change it to a GIF image or a JPEG that works as well and and if you ever want to check if your files are all going into the correct location, just click that folder icon and everything looks good. So I'm going to click OK. As you can see, it only took about like a second to get everything rendered. Now you can see all the rendered images go into my fireball folder. I'm going to select all the images by click dragging or you can control A and I'm just going to right click the first image and click create a new video and Windows default kind of movie editing video editing software will pop up kind of similar ish to iMovie I'm just going to name it fireball now if you are doing this on the Mac or if you want to edit it on your Mac the steps are fairly similar so in this project library area I'm going to click the first image scroll all the way down shift click the last image and then I'm going to click place in the story board now I'm just gonna check that all the images are here and it looks like it now I click the first image and I holding down shift and I selected the last image to kind of select all the images right now I'm just checking to make sure they are and once they all are selected go to duration and change it to 0.03 or 0.02 depending on if you want it a little bit faster or a little bit slower, you might have to just kind of play around with the duration a little bit to see which one matches closest to the final animation speed that you want. But I'm just going to keep it at 0.03 as I feel like that's the closest I can get to the motion that I had for my fireball. So once that looks good, again, I'm just going to check that all the images are changed to that 0.03 duration. I'm going to play it just again to make sure it looks good and it does. So I'm going to click finish video on the upper right and I'm gonna click export and again I'm just gonna make sure that it's gonna be exporting to the fireball folder click OK this is what it looks like and as you can see in our fireball folder our video file is now there if you want to learn from me or any of our other professional artists feel free to check out our website and maybe consider signing up for our classes you'll get creative assignments individual guidance and real-time feedback on your artwork. If you learned something new, please like and share with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. And here are a couple other videos you can check out next.